On today's episode, I'm interviewing attorney Benjamin Gold. Benjamin is the founder of the official Lawyer Stories Instagram page, where thousands of lawyers and law students from around the world inspire others by sharing their personal stories. And now, here's the interview. On today's episode, I'm interviewing attorney Benjamin Gold. We met on Instagram, actually, through Lawyer Stories. You're the founder of Lawyer Stories. And I shared my story with your audience. And now it's time for you to share your story, your lawyer story with my audience. So tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and what you're up to. Right. Thank you. So first of all, thanks for having me. Um, You're doing terrific work. Keep up the great job. Um, Yeah. So I went to UMass Amherst uh, for undergrad. I took a year off. And then I went to uh, Roger Williams Law School in Rhode Island. Um, I ended up uh, practicing for about five years, um, a little over five years in Connecticut um, after I passed the bar exam. Uh, I waved into two other bars, so a member of uh, the Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Maine bar. Maine is my home state. Um, and I, so with my practice, I was practicing at a public housing authority, doing landlord-tenant law, uh, going into court working out agreements, stipulated agreements, um, sometimes evictions, doing small trials, nothing, nothing big. Um, and then I did some contract procurement, um, contract negotiation, bidding, that sort of thing. Um, I then had an opportunity in North central mass to become uh, an assistant executive director of a housing authority. Um, actually we, we manage five housing authorities here in North central mass. Uh, so I'm doing that now. Very good. So tell me a little about uh, Lawyer Stories. Uh, It's a fantastic page uh, with many, many great stories on there. Uh, Tell me about how you came up with the idea, why you started it, and how it's going for you. Thanks. Yeah, so Lawyer Stories was just um, kind of goes back to my big interest in legal studies and sociology. And, you know, like one of my favorite movies is The Paper Chase. And um, like, how law school like sort of makes you feel, you know, I know we read like one L by Scott Turow at, at one point and like, you know, I found myself not really asking people or attorneys about their cases, but I was like more interested in their path because I knew I had a path, you know, I with the bar exam and with law school and, and uh, you know, I found when I, when I asked attorneys, like, you know, why did you go to law school? They're like, what was a big challenge or, you know, what was your biggest success? Like they, they love to, they love to talk about it. And I realized that like everybody has a story, all attorneys, um, law students, we can all connect um, on some level with the story. So I said, you know what, like, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to start with like six people I know, see if I can get them to do this um, on this brand new Instagram page. And then I'm going to see like, uh, if I could just start reaching out to people and connecting with people. And so far it's just been, it's been awesome. Like I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's amazing. Amazing. Now you have thousands of followers and I'm sure it's going to get to hundreds of thousands of followers. Yes, definitely. It might take some time, but thank you. No, but it's, it's a great platform. You know, you talked about stories and, and that's part of the reason why I started interviewing people on this show. It's because uh, you know, when we share our stories, uh, it's it's the only way that we get to pass on our knowledge and for other people to learn uh, a little bit about what it takes um, to be on the path that we're on or maybe uh, learn something or get inspired or, uh, you know, just to just to, uh, you know, be an inspiration for other people, I think is amazing. And, and your page definitely does that for people. I mean, I go through some of the stories and, and I'm amazed at, at them. And it's just, it's very fascinating. Thank you. Yours is as well. If everybody, everybody needs to scroll down and see Layla's stories. It's terrific. Thank you. One of the thank first you. people to um, present me with a story. So I thank you for that. Thank you. So tell me a little more about the direction that you want to take this. So um, do you just want people to contact you if they want to share their stories or how do you want to um, reach uh, lawyers and law students? Yeah, thank you. Um, You know, I'm just trying to grow it organically, uh, slowly and consistently. Um, If sometimes I'll see a page and if I think somebody would, you know, make a good story, which everybody would make a good story because everybody's different. Everybody has a distinct story. 
um, people can, I reach out to them or they can send me a direct message. Um, I also will send them back some information. Uh, it's really evolved into people telling me their path to, to the law and the challenges and successes. At first, I had a paper that was basically asking them questions about, like, what do you think of, like, the legal profession? Like, who's your favorite Supreme Court justice? Or, like, what's the coolest case that you ever read? But it ended up people, like, being on this platform just telling me, like, oh, this, you know, this is about my experience going through law, uh, going through law school and becoming an attorney. So that's how it evolved. But definitely, um, you know, a direct message on Instagram, uh, my email. I have a Gmail account. I might be switching it over to, a, like, a, a different type of email. Um, that's basically how anybody can, can get a hold of me at this point. Now, can law, can law students also contact you? Do you, are you interested in their stories as well? Or yep, is it just absolutely. lawyers? Okay. Yep, I have um, some law students that I've featured. Uh, they have some great stories. Uh, it's been mostly attorneys, uh, but I do definitely accept some law student stories. That's great. Yeah, because I think it's so important for law students to hear about other people's experience because law school, uh, I don't know if it was for you, but it was for me one of the hardest things I had to do. Uh, and it's this, this sense that you're alone and uh, you kind of, as, as lawyers, you, we don't want to admit that if we don't know something or if something is challenging us. So it's, it's good to have this platform where you can go read other people's struggles and really not feel alone. Yep. And, you know, I hope it helps people connect, too, within Instagram as well. Absolutely. Yes. Did you know you always wanted to be a lawyer? That's not really. I'm not yeah. one of those people who can tell you, like, like, three years old, I want to be a lawyer. But I just feel like I wanted to go to law school, just get the degree and sort of go from there. I wanted that to be, like, a continuation of my education after undergrad so i don't really i don't know i don't really have like a great reason why i wanted to be a lawyer just because i really love the study of law at um and at umass i was a legal studies major so i was very interested in that so it's sort of i kept going with it yeah I, I that's actually um interesting that you say that because that was kind of my i took a few years off before i went to law school too and i feel like when I was in law school, before law school, in undergrad, I took a couple of uh, law, uh, law classes because I was a business law major. And I ended up falling in love with the stories and the cases. And it was just so interesting to me yep. and that I felt like, okay, if I can read the cases, even though when you're in law school, you have so many cases to read that it kind of gets overwhelming. It's still, if you look at it as, as, a, as a great story and as, a, as just an interesting uh, story, it's it's just very fascinating and, and it's nice and especially i remember for my con law class there were so many things that i didn't know about the history about history and about the constitution and it was just all so fascinating to me so yeah. definitely con law was very interesting to me as well yeah it's, um, it's very interesting yep yeah. yeah. learning about the 14th amendment equal protection and criminal procedure and how it develops over time that stuff was very very interesting to me. Very interesting. Yeah, and I kind of it kind of makes me feel like everyone should know it, right? Every yeah. everyone should know uh, know it and study it and learn it and you know, it's 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 a fascinating top subject, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, you should, everybody should know their rights and at least basic fundamental rights. Definitely. Yeah. What area of law were you interested in when you were in law school? Did you have a particular area that you wanted to focus on? Um, you know, like my favorite class was, I, I like the torts and like products liability actually, because those were like the funnest, most fun case. Like yeah. I had like the battery case with like the guy like snatching a plate out of the other guy's hand at a buffet. And then you have like the case where the person like opens the door and gets like hit with a slingshot. I don't, I don't remember like the name of the cases or the rule or whatever, but, yeah. <laughs> and then products liability was always fun. I like that. I did okay in those. I like criminal procedure a lot. Um, and, uh. I actually did pretty well in housing law and policy. That was pretty good too. And that's something that you that you're actually the areas. Yeah, that's, that you're, that's actually what I'm doing. Like what you're doing. The, yeah. Law school is different than the practice of law. So, you know, when it comes down to it, with like if you wanted to practice like torts or personal injury or 
product liability, there could be a lot of like depositions and interrogatories, and you have to really like like that stuff. And I tried to do it, and you know, it wasn't like my favorite thing. I don't. I mean, I could do it if I wanted to, but it was just a little unlike um, the cases that we got to read in law school. Yeah, it's definitely different. The practice of law is definitely different. Yeah. Tell me about landlord tenant law. Like, was that what did you do in that? Um, so, so in the capacity that I was working at, it's um, we we try to preserve tenancies. I mean, we're we're working um, for people that really don't have any resources. Um, so when we take them to court, I mean, we have to be mindful that this is their housing of last resort, and the court's gonna the court's gonna view the housing authority as a housing of last resort. So we we always try to go in there thinking that we can, unless it's really like egregious or they haven't paid rent in like years or um, a while uh, and they've accumulated like a mass arrearage. You know, we want to get people on a on a stipulated agreement or even like an in-house agreement. So it's hard. Um, it was difficult, you know, working with some of these residents because you know that this is their last chance and they might not have anywhere to, to go if they have to leave. Um, and, but you know, I had, going to court was, was um, it was definitely a good experience. Yeah. I, I, I liked it, it was okay. Is that, is that why you wanted to be a lawyer? Because I know for a lot of people that idea of going to court and we see a lot of movies and we see it on TV a lot where you're giving a performance and that's just what people that want to do. Is that something that you want to do, wanted to do? Yeah, well, I mean, they told, told us in law school, like, we weren't going to be, like, wearing Armani suits and, like, arguing <laughs> in front of the court. Like, they probably, yeah, you know, um, told us, like, this isn't what it is. But, I don't know, for me, I just sort of, I had, like, a, I just loved reading, like, cases and case law. If you, Actually, I did post my lawyer story at um, post number 100, if anybody was interested in counting out 100. I, I just, remember. I did, like, a little video, and then... Um, I posted my story uh, and I wrote about how I was just, you know, I like to read like just a case in a case book before I went to law school. I was just very interested in it and I wanted to just do it. I, didn't, I actually didn't really have any um, expectations of like what would happen, which I, I recommend people do. I think like there's different reasons for people to go to law school and I think they really have to think through it and they should know, um, have a good idea of like what they want to get into and have some practical experience when they're there. So do you have any advice for law students in law school or who are taking the bar exam? Yeah, you know, um, I don't have any regrets with anything I did. Uh, I took one year off between undergrad and law school. You know, like I probably should have taken, for me personally, I probably should have taken like three or four years off and, you know, ha had a little more like gravitas, a little more like ready to do it. But I knew if I went away, I and didn't go right to law school, I probably uh, wouldn't have gone back because I would have done something else. But as for students, you know, I say like, just just focus, like try as hard as you can to like not focus on like anything else around you and just uh, not let anything take your attention away and like do the best you can. You know, you see that quote out there that something along the lines of, you know, you give up one or three years of your social life in order to be like success, really successful down the road. And I think people need to have that mind frame when going to a professional school like law school. So put in the work, put in focus, attention in those three years yep. so that, you know, you don't have, you have no regrets when it's over. No right? regrets. Just try not to get too distracted by outside, outside things that are happening. That's what mm -hmm. I would, that, that would be my, advice um, that's great advice. and you know what another thing don't be afraid to speak up in class you know everybody wants to hear people talk and different opinions and, and that's what you're there for like don't wait to get called on um don't get called you know the socratic method whatnot just go right for it and say your opinion and like don't be shy about it that's another i thing. love that i love that advice because so many people struggle with this yeah. and they're terrified of being in class because they don't, they're terrified of being called on, but there's just really nothing to be scared of. And yeah. the more you talk, the better actually. Absolutely. And once you start talking in class, you feel 10 times more comfortable and you'll do it again. Absolutely. I want you to give a little bit more advice to law students who 
um, are studying for the bar exam uh, in particular? What kinds of mindset t strategies, tips um, can you give them um, that would help them study or get keep motiv stay motivated or yes. uh, what can you suggest? Um, so I think I saw you had a post earlier today about have, like going in with like a sort of like an outline. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, like an attack there, sheet. What's that? The, like an attack sheet. Yeah. Like if you can go in there and like think contracts, okay, like offer. And then you think about like what's under like an offer, like what's a valid offer. Like you go through your mind and think that and then, you know, acceptance and then what constitutes an acceptance and then maybe like consideration and then you're thinking about like what what is valid consideration to a contract like you ha you got to go in with like that broad outline and then just sort of like dig deeper for for like the definitions or rather like your analysis piece of it the rules and then your analysis um i think that's that's one of the ways like at that it. point at, at the point of the exam you already know the law so you should have at least like a word or a phrase that'll remind you of the whole thing but then you can think about it and it reminds you of what you have to discuss and talk yep. about yeah exactly and another thing is time management mm -hmm. um, i remember taking the connecticut bar and i think there was like 12 essays and i know you have like three hours right so like before i even started to write i think i wrote on my paper like i divided everything by 12, like the amount of essays by, by like three hours or whatever it was. And I figured out how much time I can allot to each mm -hmm. essay and left a little room if I can go back because you definitely want to, you want to get through and like find all those um, issues and try yeah. to explain them a little bit through analysis. So time management is also, is also big. Like don't, you know, don't second guess yourself. Don't start erasing things. Um, just be calm, try to like block everything out. I mean, I could have used um, like a personal, um, a personal touch when studying for the bar exam and helping me get my mind straight and um, organizing my thoughts and helping with writing and, and especially the multi-state. Um, you know, I definitely could have used like a one-on-one -on -one approach. So it's too bad I didn't, I didn't know you like back then, but. That's, uh, but you know, hopefully everybody else will, will learn from my. So, so you think, you think that mindset is important because I, I obviously believe that mindset is a very yes. important part of this I exam. Do. I do. You can't, you know, like one thing I used to like sort of psych myself out with like, okay, there's a curve, at least like X amount of people have to fail. Like if 80% are going to pass the bar, like that means like 20% are going to fail. So you'd sort of, you, you don't want to think about anything like that. Um, you don't want to freak yourself out. You don't want to psych yourself out. Um, Cause once you, once you let that creep in or you, you say something like that and let it out into the atmosphere, it's going to be a self fulfilling prophecy. So you want to really like put your mind in like a no fail zone and no, you know, that it's going to be okay. And like, you're going to put forth your best effort and you know, nobody's going to fail that, that tries as hard as you do, but it is about mindset. You have to, you have to be in the right, in the right mindset. Um, no distractions, just positive use affirmations. If you have to every morning. That's actually um, part of the program that I, that I have. I have affirmations for my students where they listen to it every day. I have visualization, and that's why it's important to have these, you know, techniques and go like do them every day because it's yep. important to actually do them every day because you're, you're in training. You're getting trained just like an athlete who's training for a right. game. You're right. training every day and you got to have the right mindset. Right. Absolutely. Um, so that I think that's a big, a big part of it. Um, just keeping that mindset and saying these affirmations, knowing that you can do it. Um, especially if you're a repeat bar taker, you know, don't listen to anything like the statistics about how like the more times you take it, like the more times it gets harder because that's not the case because, you know, that if you keep taking it, if you really want it, like it'll happen. Mm -hmm. you know? so mm -hmm. keep, yeah. you gotta just keep at it. And, you know, a lot of people don't pass the bar exam on the first time. So um, it's like not the end of the world. It's really one day, not one day be a memory. 
Um, you just have to find out, you know, what's going to help you the most and stay positive. That's all. And sometimes the best thing that you it could actually happen to you, and I've seen this happen to people, is not passing the bar exam the first time, even the second time. There's so much personal growth that comes from preparing for this exam, and it's not just yeah. an exam, even though it is, but it's not just an exam in terms of it could really be a chance for personal growth and development. And I know that it was for me. It was just... Uh, a training for my for my mind to make sure that uh, I know how to manage my stress and anxiety and I think it, it trains you it prepares you for uh, life after law school and as an attorney you know because there's so much stress and anxiety with as a practicing attorney or even any work that you do nowadays anything that you do is stressful so I think that whole process just makes you a stronger, better person to deal with struggles. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if something like that happens, you go to the bar, you're just going to keep at it. You, didn't, you know, you went to law school for all that time. You're not going to give up. You just got to get back mm -hmm. up, you know, and, and give it another shot. But, of course, it would obviously help to have, you know, somebody by your side doing that and not maybe like a, a big um, – organization because some people need different types of studying tips and I think that's where a one-on-one -on -one approach would help uh, diagnose somebody's problem and then help that person where they need it. So let me ask you, I want to know what your definition or what you define as the law of happiness. So that's, that's a, you know, that, that's an interesting question, you know, it's pretty deep. Um, I would say just do what makes you happy. Like, don't do what makes anybody else happy. Um, you know, if you want to work at a government agency for 35 hours a week or 40 hours a week, you should do that. You know, if you, if you want to work at a big law firm and, and be a gunner, do that. But don't try to satisfy anybody else's dreams. Follow your intuition, you know, and do what's right for you or you will, like, not be happy. That's, I love that. So if they, if the audience want to reach you, they can uh, email you, did you say? Sure, you, you can email me at bgold1218 at gmail or send me a direct message uh, at Lawyer Stories. Lawyer on Instagram? Stories. Yeah, on Instagram, yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You have a really cool name, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show.